in education, we know the conditions that need to be present in order for students to learn at high levels all the time. The current system of education educates some students well. Uh, for every 100 students who enter uh, the education system, 66% uh, graduate on time. Of the 66% who graduate on time, only half report that their uh, educational experience was meaningful, and of those, uh, less than half uh, go on for further training uh, or further education. Uh, the question that Alan and I have been asking ourselves is, what would it take to have a system that works well for all 100 out of 100 who enter school? And uh, when we ask that question, uh, what we realize is that this requires a paradigm shift. It requires a different set of rules, a different set of processes, a different set of procedures, and a different set of tools. It also requires that all of the pieces, the stakeholders, and everybody are interconnected and can play off of each other. Uh, we refer to that system as 2X, and the reason we call it 2X is because when those conditions are met, uh, students are capable of learning at two standard deviations above the norm, and that phenomenon occurs at widespread scale. We have pockets of excellence. We don't have excellence across the entire system. The reason we don't have excellence across the entire system is the system, different parts of the system have different rules, they have different tools, they're disconnected. They have to be connected, and when they get connected, 2X is possible. The only way for those connections to occur is to have technology play a mediating force. It's having everybody share the same toolkits. It's having everybody focused on the same problem. In education, we know the conditions that need to be present in order for students to learn at high levels all the time. Uh, what happens is that knowledge, the research, if you will, is uh, disconnected from the practice. And that uh, connection of research and practice needs to be more tightly coupled. Uh, when you look at other professions, you see that, uh, that that's the case. In medicine, for instance, uh, the knowledge and research about uh, how to keep people healthy and how to repair sick people uh, is, uh, informs uh, the practice uh, almost on a daily basis. And part of that informing uh, is mediated by technology playing a special role. Uh, if 2X is going to be achieved in education, uh, the role that technology plays has to change. And it has to serve in a mediating way where the knowledge of what makes a difference is coupled directly with the activities in the classrooms. And it's done in a way where teachers are able to have those practices occur with high frequency and fidelity all the time without too much effort. The research about school change indicates that it can take anywhere from five to 10 years for a school to change. Uh, five to 10 years adds up to a lot of lives and uh, a lot of uh, professional cycles wasted. Uh, and quite frankly, that sort of work is too damn hard. Uh, we believe that the school change process uh, can be greatly reduced and condensed down so that it plays out over a matter of months. And when it does, lives are changed, uh, teacher performance is, is dramatically increased, and, and their load is uh, lowered as they do it. We treated this as an experiment where we had four control schools and four uh, treatment schools, and we gathered uh, before, during, and after data using a multi-method uh, approach. Uh, the experiment began after baseline had been established with a day and a half workshop. It involved the teachers literally using the toolkit. Uh, typically what we saw is that uh, the first time the teachers used the toolkit, uh, it was difficult. But by the time they had used it three or four times to produce a lesson, uh, they began to see the benefits of it. Uh, their conversations among each other changed their uh, understanding of uh, what went into having a high quality lesson uh, uh, grew. And as that happened, uh, they began to 
talked with each other in different ways. They began to exchange information. In fact, their meetings changed. The me meetings where they used to spend a huge amount of time talking about things like the PTA uh, luncheon or uh, a weekend bake sale, they began spending time talking about things like task structure and rotate and check and uh, observations and feedbacks and protocols. And not only did the meetings change, but the conversations in the hallways changed. And all of this happened uh, relatively quickly. The qualitative gains were obvious. What was less obvious were the quantitative gains. And the quantitative gains began to be obvious in two ways. One was student engagement. The second was the quality of instruction. And both of those, uh, over the course of the study, doubled. And when they doubled, learning began to double, as did uh, achievement test scores. And achievement, as we all know, is the crown jewel of education reform. These schools had it in spades. Building on the work of Benjamin Bloom that shows when certain conditions are present, it's possible for students to learn at high levels. Our approach has been to create those conditions in ways that are easy for teachers to attain and that are readily present for all students. When that happens, all students can learn everything that they're expected to master all the time and that that can happen at scale. That's what we're all about.